Hi, I'm glad you stopped by. We have another chapter that we're taking a look at, chapter 6 out of 2nd Esdras. And we're ver starting with verse 9, chapter 6 and verse 9. And we're only going to take small portions of this. It is all that we need to take out of this particular chapter. But very profound, very, very profound. It's interesting to note here that our instruction right here, I saw that the Apocrypha was the hidden book and that the wise of these last days should understand it. Very important information. So getting back here to chapter 6 and verse 9, it says, For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of that which followeth. So it's very interesting to understand Esau is the one who despised his birthright. And of course, uh, thinking back, the Bible in its, in its focus, it's focused on Christians and Christianity and the believers, not it's not focused on the wicked. It is not a history of the wicked. It's a history of the saints. And therefore, Esau, as a brother to the saints, which is Jacob, is presented because he despised his birthright and now is declared to be the end of the world the world he loved more than his creator. Jacob, we know, is a representative of the 144,000, right? We have the time of Jacob's trouble. And it naturally follows that he would be the beginning of eternity, first in heaven, then on the earth made new. Okay, we're skipping a couple verses here and beginning with verse 13. Ezra is speaking with an angel and talking, and so we're kind of breaking into that conversation. So he answered and said unto me, Stand up upon thy feet and hear a mighty sounding voice, and it shall be as it were a great motion, but the place where thou standest shall not be moved. And therefore, when it speaketh, be not afraid, for the word is of the end, and the foundation of the earth is understood. And why? Because the speech of these things trembleth and is moved, for it knoweth that the end of these things must be changed. So the things that must be changed are the world. And it happened that when I had heard it, I stood up upon my feet and hearkened, and behold, there was a voice that spake, and the sound of it was like the sound of many waters. And it said, Behold, the days come that I will begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth, and will begin to make inquisition of them what they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness. So I believe this to be a clear reference to the judgment of the Day of Atonement and the books being examined because it must be determined who is to be saved. And then the next phrase says, And when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled. So Zion is a figure of the 144,000 who are in the business of perfecting their characters for eternal life in heaven in the sight of the Father, Christ, and the angels. Affliction now is but the tools that foster the growth of faith, trust, and hope. And now is the only time, very important, understand this. 
the saints have to get ready for heaven. We're clearly told in another place in the Christian experience and views in the supplement that there it will be no time for perfecting our characters in the time of trouble such as never was. Okay, verse 20. And when the world that shall begin to vanish away shall be finished. So what is this world? This is the world that we can see right now. It is going to be destroyed and left in shambles. And already today we see our world in the beginning of vanishing away with lockdowns, global economy crushed, and you can throw in there rioting and this crazy business of allowing children to rampage through the, through the towns across America and destroying things. Um, then it says, and that process will be finished at Christ's second coming. Now that is, that, as you know, is where all the wicked will be destroyed at the brightness of his coming, those that are left. And then at Christ's third coming, it will be a different world entirely. The resurrected wicked will look around at a destroyed world, the magnificently beautiful New Jerusalem before them, and overcome with a sense of their loss, they will bow the knee and declare, Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. And you can get that. I highly recommend everyone get their copy of the 1858 Great Controversy, which is also known as Volume 1 of Spiritual Gifts. And that's those two little black books, if you happen to know what that is. If you don't, uh, drop me an email, you know. Well, I also put links in the description under the video. And... You'll find a link there to get your books. They're very inexpensive, actually, and they are a true photocopy reproduction of the original. Okay, then, well, I show these tokens. The book shall be opened before the firmament, and they shall see all together. And we know that in the God's Word, he repeats many things because that is what we need to get the point deep within. Here the judgment is set and the books are open, and now the saints sit in judgment on the wicked and determine the time they are to live in the fires of hell. Verse 21. This is where it gets very interesting. Um says, And the children of a year old shall speak with their voices. Apparently God has placed this information here that all the saints might be comforted, knowing full well that with God nothing shall be impossible. Imagine the martyred children of one year old standing and giving their testimony before the saints in judgment. You, I, I, it's just uh, phenomenal to think about that. The next portion of this same verse says, The women with child, that means pregnant, shall bring forth untimely children of three or four months old. Now we're going to get into this in a minute. And they shall live and be raised up. So, this looks to me like, obviously, nothing is impossible with God, as far as humans are concerned. And I believe that this childbirth will be painless, yet we know not what God really means by bring forth. These births could happen at the resurrection. So that is something to think about. Now, I think there's some significance attached to the time of three or four months. Otherwise, it probably wouldn't be there. And 
So the question is, could it be that there will be a period of three or four months of trouble of such a character that normal relations between marriage will not occur? Therefore, prior to that time, there would be a three or four month, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. I should, well, prior to that time, there would be normal relations and women can get pregnant, but there would only be a three or four month period where until the close of probation and Christ's second coming. And of course, it's not specific, but it is says three or four months. So it could easily, you know, be in there in that time frame. So remember this, prophetic time closed in 1844. That's page 148 of that same book, the 1858 Great Controversy. So because of this fact, time frames and prophecies that relate to the period since October 22, 1844 to Christ's second coming are open-ended, meaning no day for a year. Now, people will say, well, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour, so that's 15 days. Negative, <laughs> there is no prophetic time. And uh, you can read about that in Revelation chapter 10. Okay, witness the antitypical Day of Atonement, which has now lasted right down here, 176 years and will not end until probation ends with the ending of the loud cry. So that's very important to understand. It is one day because there is, it's an open-ended time frame. So it seems important at this juncture to reiterate the timing of the types to refresh our minds on this point. First, the Day of Atonement lasted one day, the tenth day of the seventh month. Then, there are four days of no feasts. There's nothing. Then, begins the Feast of Tabernacles on the fifteenth day of the seventh month. So you might want to pause the video and soak this information up here a little bit because this is very important. It's good information that we all need to know about the future. That's why it's been given to us so that we are not left in complete wondering at what is going to happen in the future. We know what is going to happen. We don't know the exact time frames, but that is God's purpose. We must be tested. Then it says the Feast of Tabernacles is important to us because God has instructed us through visions that our trip to heaven from earth is to take seven days, wherein we will not be living in our homes, but in booths. Now, this term booths is what is in the Bible, but for the saints, we are going to be living in the cloud for seven days on our trip to heaven. So this makes an excellent fit for the trip to heaven to be the antitype to the Feast of Tabernacles because the Feast of Tabernacles lasted seven days. Okay, but the open, but because of the open-endedness of these prophecies, we have four days that could be any length of time. Uh, this is um, a little bit disconcerting because this is after the close of probation and it is not going to be a fun time. God knows that it is not good for the saints to know the exact length of its time, for it appears to be the time of Jacob's trouble 
out of which we will be delivered by the voice of the Father. And here are your texts in Leviticus chapter 23. I recommend that you review this stuff and get it in your minds so that you can understand it. Then verse 22, And suddenly shall the sun places appear unsun, the full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. We are already in this country being talked and told about food uh, shortages coming. And right now we know that many places around the world there are big problems as crops are being swept away by all kinds of disasters and whatever those disasters are, but it's very, very interesting that this is happening at the same time the whole world is being shut down. We, we have got to be in the very last days. We've got to be very, very close to the giving of the loud cry. But it's very important that you be prepared. Verse 23, And the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man heareth, they shall be suddenly afraid. I think this is probably the sounding of the last message of mercy, which is the loud cry, because this is what makes sinners afraid, because they just, they were trying to get away with it, whatever. Um, I don't know that for a fact. But here we have verse 24, immediately goes into the close of probation, after the close of probation. At that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies, and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. We have to remember that all restraint is removed from the wicked, and the four winds of human strife are loosed, Every irritation, however slight, meets death because there's just, there is no restraint. And right now we have a certain modicum of restraint, which you can see. Um, the springs of the fountain shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not run. So we have a sister passage from the 1858 Great Controversy on page 205 where at the sudden appearance of the sun in the middle of the night, signs and wonders followed in quick succession, one of which is that the streams ceased to flow. Verse 25, Whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape and see my salvation. Now we have the living portion of the 144,000 mentioned who are delivered by the voice of the Father. In the end of your world, this is a throwback to verse 20, and the end of the world as we know it, a time of rejoicing for the righteous and destruction for the remaining wicked. Verse 26, And the men that are received shall see it, who have not tasted death from their birth. Uh, this is clearly another reference to the living portion of the 144,000 that have been delivered from the time of Jacob's trouble. And the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turned into another meaning. Uh, we have a lot of the world still in our hearts, and I'm sure all of that is going to be cleansed. Here we have two... Um, mirrored verses just about it, uh, Ezekiel chapter 11 and Ezekiel chapter 36. It's quite a spread, but this is, it says here, we'll read uh, 26 from 36. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. It's also important to remember that October 22, 1844, there were many, many people, about 50,000 people out. 
waiting for Christ to come. And the 1858 Great Controversy on page 148 declares that they were ready to go to heaven. I, that just floored me when I first read that. But they were ready. They reflected Christ's image. That means they were perfect. It's amazing. Even though all the saints have been converted, yet is there more room to grow, expanding by doing God's will perfectly. Uh, we have an amazing future to contemplate. It says, For evil shall be put out, and deceit shall be quenched. As for faith that shall flourish, corruption shall be overcome, and the truth which hath been so long without fruit shall be declared. Can you imagine? Every one you talk to, every person, every word that you hear from anyone is going to be truth. You can count on it. For Satan, the father of lies, is for ever gone. God bless your study.